Good morning, Relativity friends. Uh, I had posted a video on the Christoffel symbols sometime in the past, <clears throat> and I went back and looked at it a couple times, I, and I'm just not happy with it. Uh, it wasn't very good. So I took it down, and I started all over. And we're going to do it again. And this time, I think it's going to be better. Remember, I'm a student, not a teacher. So if I can't understand it, there's no point in doing it. So let's get stuck in. Remember, you can define any vector as a linear combination of its components and uh, its basis, the vectors. So if we differentiate this vector, these may or may not be uh, the constants. So what you have to do is use the, ch the chain rule and say this times root of that plus this times root of that. And you see this. Okay, there's no problem with this. This is easy to understand. Here's where the issue comes in. This is saying that the basis, the vectors, may change with the coordinates. And in relativity, because you're dealing with curvilinear, the coordinates, it, it's true. That's exactly what happens. They do change as you change the coordinates. So this becomes the definition of the Christoffel, the symbol. This is the definition of the Christoffel, the symbol. Now you can imagine in Cartesian, the coordinates were basis vectors or orthonormal unit to vectors. They're the same everywhere. So this term goes to zero. It just drops out. And that's why it's so easy to understand these things in Cartesian, the coordinates. But it's not true in curvilinear, the coordinates, which is what you're interested in in, uh, in relativity. So we're going to try to understand what this thing does and how to use it. All right. So let's get at it. All right. This is a side note, but it is something kind of fun. OK. What you do is let's take this expression and put it right back in here, and we get this. So now we have our Christoffel, the symbol, right back in this equation. All right, what we can do here is say, uh, we can swap these dummy indices. These are dummy indices, the summation indices, and it's perfectly legal to, to, to swap them. I have an I in the upper, I in the lower, a K in the upper, and a K in the lower. So on this first expression, I'm just going to swap them all. So, so now I've got K here, I here. All right, now what that does for, for us is to have the basis of vectors the same in both parts on this side of the equation. So I can pull that out as thus and leave this in the middle under the parentheses. And this is called the covariant derivative, which you will see a lot in tensor calculus and in relativity. This is just a, a side note. I thought it was fun. All right, let's get on with it. In general relativity, you want the Christoffel, the symbols, in terms of the metric, the tensor. Uh, one of the reasons you want to do that, because it eliminates all of these basis to vectors. They all go away because they become dot products, and you'll see that as we go on. Okay, so we need to do, do that, and I could not do that myself. All right, now... As a side note, I was watching a Relativity the video where they claimed that Einstein himself couldn't do that, and he went to a math professor to get the Christoffel the symbol in terms of the metric tensor. So if he couldn't do it, I don't feel too bad. <laughs> so the following derivation of how to get the Christoffel symbol in terms of the metric the tensor is straight out of a book. A Student's Guide to Vectors and Tensors by Daniel Flesch. Uh, the Cambridge University Press, page 150. So if you have that book, it's right in there. Uh, I couldn't do it myself, but now I understand it, and I'm glad I did it. All right, so let's get started. All right, here's our definition of the Christoffel, the symbol. What we want to do is dot the product, both sides of this, with a a basis of vector, but you notice that the the subscript is now a superscript. Okay, so in the old terminology, this is a covariant basis vector, and this is a contravariant basis vector. In the new tech terminology, this is just called a basis vector, and this is called a dual basis vector. 
or a basis vector and a reciprocal basis. Anything you want to call it, it's the same thing. Okay, it works the exact same, same way. Now, one of the things that's true here is that this covariant dotted with a contravariant is defined as being equal to the Kronecker delta. So the Kronecker delta, if L equals K, this is equal to 1. If L is not equal to K, this is equal to 0. So if you let it be equal to 0, there's no point in even doing this exercise, right? So we're going to let's say L equals K. Now if we do that, we put the brackets around here. So now we can express this side of the equation as uh, the Christoffel, the symbol, times this Kronecker, the delta, and you see that the K index gets absorbed, so we're left with this, Lij. Now let's put that back in, and we got this expression. Okay, so what he does next now is he says the partial of Ei with respect to the jth, the coordinate, is the same as the partial of ej with respect to the ith, the coordinate. Now, for me, that was not obvious. I had to prove that to myself. Uh, and the way I did that was I, we we're going to see later on in the presentation uh, the basis vectors for the plane puller, the coordinates expressed on a Cartesian reference to a frame is, are these expressions. We're going to see that in, in where that comes from in a, a few minutes. So I'm going to use these to show that this identity is true. So in this case, uh, the I is equal to R and the J is equal to theta. So we have this expression here. The partial of ER with respect to theta, he's claiming is equal to the partial of e theta with respect to R. So let's pl plug those in and let's see. All right, so now remember when you take the partial derivatives, you're, and in this case, the partial derivative of cosine theta with respect to theta is minus sine theta, and sine theta with respect to theta is cosine theta. In this case, the, the partial derivative of this expression with respect to R, these guys here, sine theta and co co cosine theta, they're constants. So we just write them down, and the derivative of R. Uh, is one with respect to r so you see that they are the same so we proved that and i'm happy all right let's keep rocking now what he did was because he proved this expression here he just put this in to the, to 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 this definition all right and then he split them in half all right so you see there they are there they are just he, he split them in half and added them together which is fine, and you're saying, what the heck? Why are you doing that? Well, it gets worse before it gets better. Now, the next thing he does is <laughs> this, and you're thinking, wow, looks like it's definitely getting worse. So what he's done here, if you very carefully look at this, he's adding one half, and this is called the inverse metric, the tensor, and you see here in this partial, he's got kj here and jk here. So what we just showed above is that these are equal. And this is obviously equal to that. And this is equal to that. So that means this is zero. And, and likewise, this is zero. So what he did was add, add zero to the right-hand side of this equation, which is perfectly legal to do. And you'll see why he did it. It's really quite clever. Now, the next thing we need to know is that you can raise or lower indices by multiplying them times the metric tensor. And I did a short video on this, and I'll leave a link in the description of why this is true. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Do you see where we have these E, the super L's, the contravariant, the basis vectors? So he substitutes in this expression right here, and that's legal. All right? So now we've got this in, and there's no more... E the super L's anywhere. Now we have this part is common to everything. So we're going to pull this out and it leaves us with this. Now, if you look very carefully at this, which we're going to do, you can see what this becomes. All right. This expression here 
is the same as the partial derivative of ek dot ei. So it'll be the first times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first. That's exactly what this is with respect to this coordinate. Okay? And the same is true for the other two. We get this. Now we can substitute that back in here, and it looks like this. Now, what is the dot product of basis vectors? Well, we know what that is. That's the metric tensor. That's the definition of the metric the tensor, right? The dot product of the basis of vectors is the definition of the metric the tensor. So now we can put the metric tensor back in here for k, k ki, kj, and ij, and we get boom. This is the expression used in general relativity for finding the Christoffel the symbols. So we have it in terms of the inverse metric tensor and the metric tensor with different indices. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do an example of this. Uh, we're going to do it in polar the coordinates. And why polar coordinates? Because it's the simplest the coordinate system you can use where the basis vectors are changing in the space. OK, so the theta and R basis vectors are changing in this space, which means that there are Christoffel the symbols, because <laughs> if if it wasn't changing, these would all be zero. So what we're going to do here is we're going to define a vector that is superimposed on a Cartesian reference to a frame. And we're going to say that this vector has an X component and a Y component which are given by these expressions, and that's easy for you to see from this triangle here, right? So let's put that into our definition of this R vector. And now we're going to differentiate this with respect to the coordinates, and our two coordinates are R and theta. So the partial of R with respect to R is cosine theta plus the sine theta, and we got our orthonormal, the basis vectors here. And the partial of R with respect to theta is this expression. Now what do we need to do? Well, we just said that the metric tensor is the dot product of the basis vectors. So we have to go through all the permutations of that, which is GRR, GR theta, G theta R, and G theta theta, which are these. So we're going to dot product all of these together to find our metric the tensor. All right, let's do the first one. So we write down our two basis vector ex ex expressions, and you know how to do, do this. This is this times that plus this times that plus this times this plus this times that, okay? So we get six expressions here where the, the middle two are equal. Now remember, these are orthonormal basis vectors, orthonormal unit basis, the, the, the vectors. So x hat dot x hat are on top of each other so the cosine of that angle is one x hat dot y hat they're 90 degrees apart so the cosine of that angle is zero so all of these cross terms drop out and all you're left with are the x hat dot x hat y hat dot y hat and these are this is one and this is one and you get cosine squared the theta plus sine squared theta, which is just equal to one. We all know this identity, all right? So the next one, and there's no point doing the cross terms anymore because we know uh, that they're all, all zeros, and this one turns out to be zero. And the last one turns out to be r squared. So now we have four terms where these two, and this is something about the metric tensor, is uh, it's always symmetric across the diagonal. So whatever this is, this is, this is going to be the same. They're always equal. So we got 1 and r squared, and only two non-zero components of this. Now, to do our Christoffel the symbols, we also need the inverse metric, the tensor. And taking the inverse of this matrix is not very hard because these are zero, and it's it's asymmetric across this, so we just need to take one over this and one over that, which is easy, right? All right, so we got what we need. So now let's go back and look at our definition of the Christoffel, the symbol. 
Now look at this. We got KIJ and we got a K here. Do you see this M? Now this M is in the superscript and the subscript. Uh, so in tensor algebra, that means this is a, a dummy index or a summation index. So we have to sum over M. All right. Now since we have we're working in two dimensions, that means we're going to have two of these for each one of these. So what we're going to do first is we're going to use our coordinate R. So we're going to have R here and go through all the permutations of IJ. And we're going to wind up with four of these and two uh, expressions for each one. Then we're going to make K equal the theta and go through all those permutations. So let's look at how we, we, we do this exactly. All right, so in this case, we got K is R and IJ is R. So you just carefully go through here, and in, in the first case, because you're doing a summation index over M, the first time it's R, the second time it's theta. Do you see it here and here? So you carefully you fill in all of these, make, uh, these indices. You're going to take the partials with respect to these, and our I is R in this case, and our J is R. So you write down each one of these following the same rules, and you have four of them. And each one has two parts. Okay? And the only non-zero one of these is R theta theta. So let's go through R theta theta. So we got one half of the inverse, the, 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 the metric of GRR is one. We know that. And the partial of g r theta, well, g r theta is zero. So this is zero, this is zero. And here, g, the theta theta is r squared. So the partial of that with respect to r is a 2r. And here we have one half times g r theta. Well, th the inverse g r theta is zero. So zero times this, it cancels the whole thing. It's all zero. So we're only left with this two cancels that two, got a negative r. Bam. All right, so now we're going to go and make k theta, right, like this. So now k is theta here and it's theta here. And you go through the same permutations of ij, and m in the first case is r, m in the second case is theta. So once you get, you crack the code of how to, to fill in these indices, these things are not very hard. Now, when you get in in, in, in larger amount of uh, dimensions, that they become quite complicated. There's no doubt. Okay, so we go through the same procedure we did before. And in this case, there are two non-zeros, which is this one and this one, because they're equal. Uh, and you can see here that uh, G, the theta R is zero, so this whole term drops out. But G theta theta is not zero, uh, it's 1 over r squared. So we got 1 half, 1 over r squared. And g theta theta is r squared. So the partial with respect to r is, is a 2r. The rest of these are 0. So these 2s go away. This r cancels well, one of those r's. And we're left with 1 over r. So we got three non-zero components from polar the coordinates for the Christoffel, the symbols. All right? So that's the story, and that's how it works. Uh, you can move on from this to uh, watch my video, and I'll leave a link on uh, how to find uh, the, the Riemann, the tensor, the Ricci tensor, the Ricci the scalar, because I go through all this and use these things. Uh, that's what they're for. Uh, and uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.